Hello everyone, I want to talk about knives today, not fountain pens this time. Um, I want to talk about some traditional knives, some knives that we call pukos. Now when we talk about a puko, um, the word itself is from Finland, it's Finnish, it means knife, nothing more than that. However, when we talk about a puko, we're talking about a traditional style knife. Now, if you go back historically, and by back I mean the few centuries, you'll find that knives were very common, of course, because people needed knives, you know, at least as much as they do today, to do their everyday tasks. And you go back far enough and you'll find that there were come some interesting shaped knives. But the puko, the Finnish puko, has been around for a very long time. And it has, of course, like all things, it has evolved over time. But here is a standard sort of a traditional puko from Finland. Um, there are several characteristics about it um, that we, when we talk about them, but they are sort of the traditional knife um, used for every sort of, sort of task uh, that you that most people would use a knife for, for camping, for cooking, for uh, hunting, whatever it is that you do, these would be used for that too. Um, but they have some interesting characteristics, and you can see that this is kind of unusual. You know, most of the time when we, you know, North America think about a knife, we typically think of something like, well, how about this? This is a traditional American style hunting camping knife. This is a, a marbles. Um, it's at least 50 years old. Um, I mean, isn't that that's this is like the quintessential American hunting knife, right? You've got the guard, the leather stacked handle, um, that kind of sweeping hunting clip type blade. Um, it's a good knife, uh, don't get me wrong, but this is not uh, the way that they make knives in Finland. Um, I'm sure that they can or do, but it's not the traditional knife there. So when we talk about a traditional Finnish knife, we are looking at something quite a bit different. Um, first off, you'll see, I mean, again, of course, all knives are fairly similar. They have a blade, they have a handle, they have a sheath, okay? The difference here is, of course, that there is no guard on this knife. Um, when you use it, you can get up really close to the blade. You can do some very fine detail cutting work. You just have to be cognizant that there is nothing stopping your fingers from sliding up onto the blade. It's not, not really been an issue for me. Um, I don't use this for stabbing things, which is when you would typically find your hand sliding up off the blade, uh, sorry, off the handle onto the blade. Um, they tend to be very, very, very sharp, far sharper than the knives, you know, that we typically carry around here in America, um, just because they have such a very, very fine edge. And that is because of the shape of the grind of this blade. It's called a Scandi grind nowadays, but basically it means a single bevel that on this one, it's rather high up onto the knife uh, and it goes straight to the edge. There's no secondary bevel here. And what do I mean by a secondary bevel? Well, let me show you on another American knife. Here we have um, a Benchmade brand Bushcrafter knife, um, and it, 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 it the grind starts here and then it goes down and then there's another grind right there. So when you sharpen this knife, you're sharpening just that little bit right there along the edge. Um, this, some people call a saber grind because it's got the, the flat and then another secondary. I, I, I don't really care. It's just, it's a very different um, way of grinding an edge um, because we don't tend to make knives like this in America where you go straight to the edge. It is very effective though. Nothing carves wood quite like these do. They take a beautiful edge. Um, they cut. They're very, very fine, sharp, almost scalpel-like at times. And yet they can be quite thick and so, um, you know, they, they, they are fairly robust too. One thing you'll find about them um, is that when you sharpen them, you tend to lay the entire flat this entire flat piece right here on your sharpening stones or your strops and sharpening that whole flat of that bevel. Um, one of the things that happens when you're doing one of these saber type grinds is that as you sharpen this, this secondary bevel is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as the blade gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Um, and then you get a very different cutting uh, experience with it. Um, whereas with this one, every time you sharpen it, you're basically taking this whole bevel back a little bit, and so it stays the same. I mean, over time, of course, it will grind down and shorten up the knife and all that stuff too, but that would take a long time. Um, so this is a tra traditional Finnish puko. Um, it's, I believe, made by a company called Yarvempa. Um, typical uh, pukos have a blade with a stick tang where underneath the, the handle here this would narrow down and then there would be basically a stick of steel that comes through and you can see it at the end here it has been peened over a little brass ferrule to hold the handle 
and the, and these ferrules together and to a solid knife. Now, it's a very strong design. Um, it's it's not something where you would want to be you know pounding on it laterally or something like that. But knives really aren't meant to be be wailed upon with hammers or anything like that. And this one can take a reasonable amount of abuse, especially because this one is quite old. Um, I really don't know how old, but uh, the person I purchased it from speculated that it was at least 50 years old. Um, <clears throat> the sheath was rotten. I had to rebuild it. But one of the things that's tradi tra traditional about um, your Pucos is that they tend to have a sheath that's a pouch-type sheath, um, and they tend to hang from a dangler. Uh, this one's got a brass ring. Um, the, the other times you'll see them where it's just a, a, a thong of leather. Um, but this one's got a few ornaments where you've got these the brass end and the brass ring up here at the top. So it's a little bit fancier than normal, but the knife itself is pretty typical. There's nothing incredibly fancy about it. Um, very effective knives. Um, inside the sheaths, other than the leather, there is there is a wooden um, kind of a, a blank in there that the blade fits into. Um, that protects the the knife as well as the owner. Uh, should you fall upon this, that wood will protect the person and keep the knife from coming through the leather and hurting you. I mean, not that it would get past the brass either, but anyway, most of them have a liner of sorts, and this one's got a wooden liner, and more modern ones have plastic liners. And speaking of more modern ones, this is another Finnish Puko. This one is made in Finland as well by a company called Hemo Roselli. Um, it too has a lot of the same characteristics of the traditional Puko. You have a pouch type sheath, there's a plastic liner, and the knife itself has a flat spine and a single bevel grind. This one too is made out of a very high carbon steel. In fact, this one's called ultra high carbon steel, and it is hardened to a rock wheel much higher than most knives would be taken to which means that it can take a very, very, very fine edge, and the company says that it will hold the edge, and I haven't any reason not to believe them yet. However, I did chip it and had to re-sharpen uh, it quite a bit. And that's the one thing I would say about Pucos that you have to be aware of, is that these grinds, these single bevel grinds straight to the edge like this, and some of them are slightly convexed, and they probably all should be. Uh, it makes them a little bit stronger, and it's a little bit more natural when you're sharpening them, but what it does is it creates a very um, almost fragile edge. You just have to be very aware that there's not a whole lot of metal behind that very fine point and that you can damage it by hitting on, on something like a rock or metal or ceramic or something like that. Yes, they will cut. They will cut s I I incredibly well. They, they, they carve wood like nothing else. But it comes at a price and that it price is, is a, a less um, robust edge as far as strength goes, but it will take a very fine sharp edge like no other grind will do. Um, because I'm such a fan of these Pucos, um, I actually attempted to make one of my own in the traditional style, and I'll show this one quickly. Um, sometimes the sheaths uh, aren't just made out of leather and metal. Sometimes they're made out of wood or antler. Uh, this is actually holly, which, is, which is, looks a lot like bone, which is fine. Um, which is also another traditional material. It's a, it's a natural material, and it's something that you would find. Um, I actually patterned this off of a, a traditional knife that I'd seen. Um, I did a few embellishments of my own, of course. I did a little bit of, you know, a little uh, surface carving here um, and some, you know, ornamental stitching around the edges and stuff. But you've got kind of a, a half tube of leather here, and then the rest of it is this wood, which is inletted to fit the blade perfectly. And the knife itself is another Puko-style blade, where you've got the flat spine. This one's got a slight downturn, which you'll find a lot of Pucos do have a slight uh, drop point. Not all of them are perfectly straight across the spine. Um, this one is made out of an old wood rasp. As you can see, those, those semicircular cuts. Um, and the handle's a little bit different. Um, it's my own design. I, I feel it, it's quite comfortable. It kind of locks my finger in, um, in lieu of a guard. Um, and anyway... Um, but it's my, my iteration of a, of a traditional Puko, and it fits really nice and snug in that, that sheath. Um, but when most people are talking about Pucos, they think about something called a Mura. Um, Mura Knife is a company out of uh, Sweden, and they make these, these knives, and they're, while not exactly traditional, they are still clearly, obviously, Pucos. You have the somewhat flat spine and the upturned 
blade and the single bevel grind here. Uh, the handle's a bit different. It's more um, formed to the hand, and it's made it clearly out of uh, plastics and rubber. Um, but, you know, for the price, it is really, really, really hard to beat a Mora. This is the Mora Robust. There are other versions. There's the, gosh, the, you look up their catalog and you'll see literally uh, dozens of different knives. They all ha will have a similar blade type, though, where you've got this same shape, this, this puko shape, where you've got the upturned edge, a, set, a, a pretty flat spine, um, and then you've just got the flat of the blade and then the single bevel down to the edge. Um, this one uh, I've modified a little bit, as you can probably tell, and it's seen some use. Uh, I drilled a hole in the handle for a lanyard, and um, I, I took the grind. The grind was actually a, a bit shallower, and I took it farther up the blade so it would cut better. But it has a fairly thick blade, so it is, it is stronger than most. It, too, has a pouch-type sheath that it kind of locks into, and it's seen better days. Um, and then this clips over your belt, and then if you were, you know, traditional Swedish... I, I don't know how what kind of a button they use, but they have a, a button on their pants or... or what you know i don't know if it's their suspenders or whatever that fits into this slot and snap and then and the knife will snap into and so that's what that's for but these are really good usable knives if you want to try out a puko this is where you start you start off with a mora knife uh i would reckon you know recommend something like the companion um rather than than the robust and and get one in you know possibly in stainless steel because so far the ones we've been looking at here none of these are stainless they will rust um, they do make them the moras in stainless and one of the things that's become more and more common are stainless pukos from the traditional makers and i have one here that's hiding from me there it is so here's more another sort of traditional style puko um, this one uh, is called a Tasku Puko. It's made by a company called Irapu. And here we have a neat little Puko blade. And this, you know, this is the quintessential Puko blade. The perfectly flat spine, the upswept edge, grind, single bevel. But this one's a stainless steel blade. And I have found that the Swedish stainless steel blades or Finnish or Norwegian, whatever they are, they tend to use a stainless that is really good at um, taking an edge and being fairly easily resharpened. You're not going to be pulling out diamond stones and things just to try and put an edge back on these. They are, they performed almost precisely as well as the carbon steel blades. And so for me, um, after having used some of them quite a bit, I think I'd go with the stainless myself, and that's why I got this one in stainless. Um, this is kind of a fun one. Um, it's a kind of a two-piece little, two little scabbard here where the blade fits up into the other one, and that you can pull this through and it holds it together. This isn't coming out, and you can hang this from a, a thong or a buttonhole or something like that. It's kind of neat. It's kind of a neat little thing. Um, but another little thing I wanted to mention here, the blade in this is made by a company called Lauren Matali, and they make a lot of the Puko blades that are used in a lot of the other companies. There are companies like uh, Ati, um, Kellum, Wood Jewel. Those, when you look up a, a Puko on the internet, you'll those names will come up because those are traditional um, Puko makers, and almost all of them use blades made by Lauren Matali, as this one is too. They are good quality blades. Uh, they're nothing to turn your nose up at. They are traditional uh, uh, Puko style blades. Rat tail tangs, most of them. Um, but they make different ones. They make uh, some, some super high carbon steels. They make ones that are differentially heat treated. They make some that are stainless, some that are carbon. There are a lot of different things in that. But when we talk about Pukos, we're still talking about a fairly traditional style blade. But as I mentioned, a lot of people are making them now all over the world, and they're coming up in different ways. Um, so, for example, um, let me look at one here. Uh, this one is made in Taiwan uh, by Spyderco. Those of you who recognize that little symbol there, and ooh, if I can get it out of the bla of the sheath there, another. So it's in a pouch type sheath. This one, is st instead of having a liner, it's got, it's got very stiff leather. Um, this one is kind of interesting. Um, it's made out of a very high carbon stainless steel CPM uh, S30V. 
very good quality, very nice heat treat. The handle's made out of G10. So even though the, you know, the Pucos look somewhat different, there are still a lot of things that are similar. You've got the flat spine, the single bevel. You know, the materials may have changed a little over time, but they still have the same aesthetic and the same usability. One of the things that's interesting about these two is these two have the uh, somewhat trapezoidal blade um, profile, where it's very thin here and it thickens in the middle. So this line you see here running up the, the center line of the blade is actually the thickest point of the blade that it thins from each end. And um, you'll find that in older knives that were forged like this one rather than the ones that were ground like the Mura's. So this one took quite a bit more time to make and of course they also put fullers in the edge here. Um, again, probably to lighten the blade um, or for aesthetics, I'm not sure. Um, but this one has the same sort of deal where it's got a thicker section running down the center of the blade and it's thinner to each side and one of the things it does too is at least from what I understand is, is part of the reason they do that is, is to make it so it will slide through the things that you're cutting easier so this is you know another take on a Puko but this one made in Taiwan now let's look at um, an American one so let's look at a pair of them this is an American knife company this is not what they call a puko, but I mean to say that it isn't, a, you know, at least inspired by them, it would be silly. Of course it is. It's got the long, flat profile with the upswept single edge bevel grind. It's made out of carbon steel. There is no guard. Um, this is a very nice knife. It's made out of A2 steel. It's actually made by Bark River um, in um, Michigan, I believe. Anyway, um, so this is this is an American version. Um, this is actually something that was, I believe, uh, at least um, not if not designed by him, at least it was a design that he um, articulated with uh, Morse Kochansky. And uh, this is the forest knife, um, and it's it's got a lot of the the features that he uh, spoke about as being the best for a um, a forest uh, or bush crafting knife. And uh, it comes in a pouch type sheath. Again, not with a liner, but very thick leather. And this one's interesting because there's a big magnet right here that holds the blade in place so it doesn't fall out. Which, now let's get to the last Puko in my collection here today. There are others, but I just I don't want to go into all the others because they're basically repeats of some of the things we've looked at here before. This is a rather new design by um, Bark River. It's called the Bark River Puko. And as you can see, it's got a semi-pouch type sheath, but it's kind of a hybrid where you it looks more like a, a another, you know, well, it looks a lot like this one too. You see that? They're pretty much the same, except for this one doesn't have the magnet, and I really wish it did because uh, this blade tends to have an, uh, has a tendency to fall out. Um, <clears throat> and it cut me the other day. Anyway, this one is a little bit different. You can see the handle slightly different, but again, you've got that long flat, and then you've got the long single bevel. And this one is made out of 3V steel. And of all the ones I've so showed you so far, this one here is my favorite. This thing is fantastic. The edge that it takes, and how long it holds it, and it just, um, it just, it's just incredible. What this 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 knife, the steel. Um, the form factor and all of that is just wonderful. Now I just need to find a way to make it stay in the sheath because um, if I shake it upside down, it'll fall out, and that needs to be fixed. But anyway, so Pucos, they come in a lot of different, you know, from a lot of different places, made by a lot of different people. Um, they come with different sheaths. They come with different handle and blade materials. But when we're talking about a Puko, we are talking about the quintessential standard Knife from Scandinavia, um, from the inexpensive Mora knives all the way up to the more expensive things like the Hamo Rosselli and these other bark rivers and such with these long, flat, spined, single bevel blades, typically hardened much harder than most other knives, um, but can cut fantastically. Anyway, that's enough for today, and I hope that you have a good rest of your day. Thanks.